Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Joseph Dobrian, and welcome to another half hour of political discussion from a libertarian perspective. Uh, this evening, I have in the studio with me three candidates for United States House of Representatives from the 20th District of New York State, which extends from northern Dutchess County up north to Essex County and from the eastern border of the state clear over to the west edge of the Catskill Mountains. The uh, three candidates with me tonight are Democrat Ed Pell, uh, Libertarian Eric Sundwall, and Democrat Morris Guller. Now, um, I'd like to start by asking you three gentlemen to give me an idea of the principles behind the parties that you represent. I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Sunwall. Can you tell me, in terms that any layman can understand, just what are the guiding principles behind the Libertarian Party? What does it stand for? Sure. In essence, it's the responsibility of the individual uh, to have self-regarding behavior. And as such, uh, the, the, the next premise would probably be that um, the initiation of force to achieve one's own political ends are, are, are not uh, something that we would do. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Guller, uh, maybe you could tell me what are some of the underlying principles behind the uh, Democrat Party, which I imagine is uh, tough to answer because you've been around for 200 years, right? Just about 200 years. <clears throat> the Democratic Party was uh, established in the early 1830s by Andrew Jackson, and the first Democratic president was a New Yorker by the name of Martin Van Buren. Since its inception, it has been a party of inclusion. It includes everybody. And all of the main social advancements that have been made in America have been made during Democratic administrations. And the largest number of immigrants to this country have been able to come here under Democratic administrations. So the Democratic Party is, is, a, is the party of inclusion. Okay, and uh, Mr. Pell, maybe you can tell me about some of the um, fundamental differences that one often sees among Democrats. Uh, because as Will Rogers, I believe it was Will Rogers, he once said, uh, I don't belong to any organized political party, I'm a Democrat. And the party does have that reputation. Maybe you can tell us why. Uh, no, I can't tell you why, but uh, certainly one of the issues that there's some spectrum of belief on is uh, the pro-peace uh, platform, which uh, many of us in the Democratic Party are pro-peace, but not all of us. And uh, likewise, most of us, I would think, in the Democratic Party are pro-energy independence, but not all. I, mean, uh, I can't imagine why not, but uh, they are. Okay. Well, now, uh, each of you candidates, I imagine, has one or two pet issues that you're going to be pounding during the upcoming campaign. We'll start with you, Mr. Pell. Do you have a single issue that uh, is driving your campaign harder than any of the others? Uh, the war in Iraq and our need to uh, do the responsible thing and leave immediately. Uh, that would be one of my prime issues. Um, okay, very good. And Mr. Sunwall, what, if any, is your prime issue? Well, I concur with Ed, but I'm also very concerned about the fact that we have a $9 trillion debt that the blue and the red keep racking up. Uh, and, uh, you know, as you know, libertarians are fiscally conservative, and uh, with any hope for our uh, fiscal sensibilities in the future, uh, you know, we need to curb spending. Okay. And Mr. Guller, uh, do you have a particular pet issue? Yes, but first I'd like to say that when the blues were in, we didn't have a, t a $9 billion trillion dollar debt. We had a $2, two trillion dollar surplus. It's been the Reds that have given us the $9 trillion dollar debt. Uh, besides the war, which I'm vehemently against and want the troops brought home immediately, for my district it's wind power. I've been working on trying to encourage wind power uh, and two wind farms in the 20th Congressional District since 2001, since I started uh, discussing it. But it's just starting to take hold now that gas is, you know, creeping over $3. Okay, well, you all seem to be pretty much agreed on the war. Uh, but I want to go back, Mr. Guller, to a remark that you made early on when you mentioned that, the, uh, d uh, that all major social advancements, I think was the term you used, yes. or progress, took place under a Democrat administration. That's correct. Um, now, I think a lot of libertarians would take issue with you. You would say that uh, those changes, most of them, were not desirable, that they uh, were changes in favor of big government and less personal freedom. Um, so can you point to certain specific issues where you feel that the Democrat Party has advanced American society? And um, um, then I'll uh, maybe let Mr. Sunwall and Mr. Pell have at you. Sure. When you live on the richest, in the richest country ever known on the face of the earth, it is perfectly, cons perfectly right that the government 
uh, like under um, FDR, form the Social Security Administration to help protect those people in our society that can't protect themselves or can't take care of themselves. And uh, those social advances were mainly made in the 1940s, 1930s and 1940s when FDR, and then during the Great Society when Lyndon Johnson was President of the United States. And I think you can ask anybody uh, who didn't have the right to vote in 1964 what Lyndon Johnson meant to this country and what the Great Society meant to this country. Okay, well we're talking about two different issues there. We're talking about uh, Social Security, which is a sort of a Ponzi scheme, and then uh, voting rights, which are something entirely different. But uh, um, I think I'll leave it to Mr. Uh, Sunball to dispute Social Security <laughs> rather than me. That's not my job. Uh, Eric, what do you have to say to what Mr. Guller just sure, said? Sure, if there was any pretense for the social safety net, it's no longer the case anymore. Obviously, we gear it towards who makes more money, who's going to get more benefits, and that's a promise that we can't keep into the future here. Um, I disagree with Mr. Guller that the, the progressive elements of political change have been a result of the Democratic Party, and I take that back to the progressive era of the early 1900s and the pressure of third parties to make the two parties perform, and including voting rights <coughs> for women. Okay, and of course a lot of libertarians would say that the so-called progressives of the early 20th century, such as Theodore Roosevelt and Robert La Follette, were every bit as pernicious as Franklin Roosevelt or Lyndon Johnson or any of that crowd. Well, they certainly had a lot of friends who were in uh, big industry and caused a lot of different problems with those associations, but um, you know, obviously that's a long historical dissertation that this, <laughs> this venue may not um, you know, uh, allow. Okay, well, uh, now uh, Mr. Pell, you and Mr. Guller are both Democrats. You're apparently vying with each other in a uh, primary that's going to take place in September. And uh, maybe you could uh, tell me what the principal um, differences are on the issues between yourself and uh, Mr. Guller. Well, I don't think there's a strong set of differences between the two of us. There are, there are other candidates. There's another Democratic candidate, uh, uh, Gillibrand. <clears throat> who's running. Um, sh she's the money candidate. Uh, we're the people's candidates, uh, grassroots candidates. Uh, she, uh, and we, we differ from her greatly, she, uh, she wants to increase special forces to do tact over the next two years to tactically, uh, to, to, uh, to cre carry out uh, tactical strikes against terrorist cells in Iraq. That's certainly not something I'm in favor of. I'm in favor of leaving Iraq now. Um, she's against um, capital gains tax because she says, quote, everyone owns stocks, unquote, whereas I've seen the 20th Congressional District, not everyone owns stocks, most, most of the people don't. So you would don't. favor a capital gains tax? <clears throat> I would favor a direct tax on accumulated wealth over a million dollars. 1% over a million dollars, 2% over 10 million, 3% oh, over Oh, you know, you're just billion. the kind of person that makes us libertarians start watering at the mouth and thinking about how we're going <clears> to <throat> rip you apart. I but uh, now, Mr. Guller, you can uh, tell me a little about how you differ, if at all, from, uh, from Mr. Pell. Not very much at all. I want an end to the war. I've developed a few more programs for the, the district. Uh, there's national programs and there's some local programs. Uh, but we don't differ very much at all. Okay, now, Mr. Pell was saying that uh, you two are the people's candidates, whereas uh, uh, your um, third opponent in the Democrat primary is the so-called money candidate. What do you mean by people's candidate? I didn't say it. You didn't say it. <laughs> it's true. I was uh, <laughs> trying to trick you up, trip you up there, but it didn't work. Okay. Mr. Pell, what's the people's candidate? Well, uh, let me start with the other side. What's the money candidate? The candidate who comes from Manhattan and, and has raised $700,000 from 400 of her friends in Manhattan who carpet bags her way up to the 20th district and pretends to be a resident, uh, that would be the money candidate. People's candidates would be people who, who reside in the district, have resided there for some time, who know the people in the district, who have a lifestyle that's comparable to other people in the district. We don't have a condominium on York Avenue in Manhattan. We have, you know, we live the lifestyle of the, our fellow you know, voters. Okay, now Mr. <coughs> Sunwall, um, what's the libertarian position on people versus money? Um, do we have one? I, I think we do, but maybe you can tell us about it. People versus money. Um, well, certainly wealth is something that we shouldn't necessarily chagrin in our society. Uh, I think maybe uh, the idea that taxation is theft is something that differentiates the, the, the libertarian. Yeah, now from let's go on about that. We're, we're hearing uh, uh, advocacy of a wealth tax from Mr. Pell. 
Uh, what's the libertarian position on that? Libertarians are in favor of free markets and, and self-regarding behavior in terms of individuals. Um, obviously, we sometimes get the label of being uncaring and, and, and not uh, supporting our fellow man. Uh, but I think we would just make the opposite case, that the taxation and government and bureaucracy is not what necessarily does that. Uh, one of the customers that I have has a parts counter, and when I talk to the average parts guy on there, he goes, you know, it, it's really nice that, you know, you, uh, they, they tax us of all this money, but it'd be nice if they gave some of that to the poor. And, of course, the implication is there that the bureaucracies and, and the government itself feeds on 90% of that taxation that it, in fact, uh, brings into its till, if you will. Okay. Well, now, I would take that a step further, and I'm going to address this to you, uh, Mr. Guller. Um, at whose expense um, are um, the um, uh, lower economic classes taken care of by the government, uh, and why should certain people be made to pay for other people, and does this not imply that there is really no such thing as private property in this country. Well, I don't know that that <clears throat> implies about no private property, but you cannot distinguish a nation taking care of its poor any more than you can a village when you have someone who's sick and can't take care of themselves. Someone's going to help them. Someone's going to take care of them. Someone's going to look after them. And that's why we have these social programs. It's not stealing money from one group to give to another. It is using the taxes, that everybody's been paying taxes since medieval times for some reason whatsoever, for some reason, for some reason, for health care or protection or wherever to get around the other side of the moat when they were being attacked. We have to use our taxes wisely, and I say our taxes should be used to help those people less fortunate so all Americans can live a decent life. Okay, and uh, how do you feel about to the issue of public education and the use of government funds therefore? I'm all in favor of public education, and I, I think edu public education, our public education system needs to be strengthened, and we need to spend more, and that's one priority that needs to go to the very top of the list, because the children are the future, and the children are the ones that are going to uh, suffer if we don't fund public education. Okay. Children are our future. That's the most original thought I've heard all day. Um, Mr. Uh, Pell, would you uh, agree with uh, Mr. Uh, Guller on, <coughs> on that in principle? Uh, certainly I agree with him on the funding, public funding of education. I would go on to, to, to endorse uh, vouchers and uh, allowing a diversity of approaches to education, not just one, uh, you know, one size fits all, mm -hmm. <coughs> but I would favor public funding. Okay, now Mr. Sunwall, generally speaking, libertarians oppose public education or favor it only as a last resort. Maybe you can explain to our viewers why that is and... Uh, because um, it's a monopoly. You know, basically, we, we won't suffer monopolies in the marketplace, but we'll suffer monopolies when it comes to the government establish of, establishment of it. And uh, I guess one of the things that I would say was, what would happen if you didn't pay your property taxes in order to support public education? It would be violently taken from your home. And uh, I have two small children, and I'm perfectly um, willing to send them to a public school at the moment. They're not of, of school age. Uh, but I have serious reservations about what that monopoly does to the educational process in terms of tenure with teachers, in terms of uh, curriculum, in terms of uh, technological and other advancements that could increase the education. Uh, you keep throwing more and more and more on the education and we get less and less results. And I'm not a fan of unfounded mandates brought down from the federal government in order to do that. Now, obviously, as a candidate for Congress, my only... Um, my only approach to that would be no federal education, and I would tend to let the states uh, make those decisions and those localities make those decisions. Again, I don't want to make it seem like I'm going to eat small children and take away their education. But, They're pretty you know. gamey tasting anyway. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, so I wouldn't recommend that. But uh, um, you bring up an interesting point, and that is the use of property taxes to pay for public schools, which is almost universally the, the case in this country. Uh, now, Here's an interesting proposition, well, at least you may find it interesting, and that is that if your property is taxed to pay for public education, isn't it implied that you don't really own that property, that you only lease it from the government at the government's pleasure, and they can take it from you if you don't pay a tax based on it? Certainly, and we've also seen that in cases of eminent domain, too. Uh, uh, I, I found that I, as a small business owner, uh, my business property was held hostage for approximately two years while state plan while local planning 
and um, zoning boards and uh, State Department of Transportation basically kept me from making my nut, you know, okay. every month. Now, Mr. Pell, I put it to you that uh, aside from the Libertarian Party, there's no party in the United States that really and truly believes in the concept of private property because um, through uh, measures such as property taxes and, and so forth, it's been made pretty clear by the government that you don't own a damn thing that the government can't take away from you at its pleasure. Uh, can you refute that? Um, <clears throat> I think it's reasonable to levy taxes to fund the government and as to what form, it, uh, you know, whether that's an income tax or a property tax, it's not and a real exciting. And you're actual confiscation of personal fortunes, are you <clears throat> not? It's another property tax. I mean, it's not real property, it's, it's you know, more um, intangible properties, but it's property tax, it's another property tax. But it's, it's confiscation of personal property to redistribute the wealth, correct? It's, uh, it's allowing people to contribute to the common good. Allowing people? Do they have a choice? <laughs> no, they don't. Okay, then you're, you're not really quite using the okay. word allowing in the proper way, are you? How about you, Mr. Guller? Do you go along with Mr. Pell? Because it seems to me like you're implicitly saying both, if you agree with him, I guess Mr. Pell is implicitly saying that there's really no such thing as private property that the government can't take away from you if it wishes to. You have the choice of whether government takes it away from you by not paying your taxes. Oh, and, and then you and go to jail. Uh, no, or you have your property your, confiscated that's or correct. whatever. That's it's, correct. it's the same choice that a mugger gives you when he says, that's not true. you give me your money or I'll kick the crap out of you. No, that's not true because sending a kid to school is not kicking the crap out of anybody. Sending a kid to school is giving them a future. No, we're not talking about sending a kid to school. We're, we're talking, talking about, about making you pay to send other people's kids we're to school. We're talking about taxing property for the good of the schools to put money into the schools so children can have an education. But I am not interested. So let's say I am not interested in those children. I don't even have any, and if I had, I'd send them to private schools. So why should other people's children be educated at my well, expense? That's just the point. If you have the money, send your kids. There's not, everyone doesn't have to go to public school. You, if you have the money and you want to no, send your child to No, you're evading my question. I'm saying why should other people's children be educated at my expense? Because those, one of those children someday may find a cure to cancer that may save your life. So it's up to us to educate every one of them. But it's my choice, shouldn't it be? No. Okay. So um, it seems to me, Mr. Sunwall, that your two Democrat <coughs> opponents are implicitly stating that there is no such thing as a free citizen. There are, we are resources for the government that the government owns, lock, stock, and barrel. They can take our property. They can force us to do this, that, or the other. The Libertarian Party, though, is as far as I know, the only party that does not stand for that concept, correct? That is correct, and I think quite often what you see with Democrats is they're, they're very uh, much always responding to Republicans, and the idea of a libertarian isn't necessarily something that they But let's they not would. let the Republicans off the hook either. They are just as... Sure, uh, they advocate the same, the, the same type of issues, and you know, in, in, in essence, there's not much difference between them in those regards. And it is the libertarians who promote you know, a, a more free, personal uh, regard you know, than, than, than other parties do. And maybe that's the fact and reason why we don't have as much electoral success as we might like, but it is also the reason why we call ourselves the party of principle. Right. And I think that um, the concept of self-ownership is not very strong amongst people of other parties. And you can see that in their attitude towards the right to keep and bear arms, which both Democrats and Republicans seem to be in favor of watering down or dispensing with entirely. Uh, Mr. Guller, maybe you can tell me how you feel about the right to keep and bear arms, the Second Amendment of our Constitution. I strongly support the Second Amendment of the Constitution, and when you say bear arms, when that was written, the only arms you could bear was a musket. Now they've got submachine guns, so do you have the right to keep a submachine gun? Pardon? They had pistols and shotguns back then as well. <clears throat> okay, they had them as well, but do you have a right to keep submachine guns and, and all kinds of, of, of mass weapons? Uh, um, larger type weapons in your arsenal in your home? I don't believe so. I don't think you need them. But do you favor the um, right to uh, keep uh, arms sufficient for your own protection and so forth? Absolutely. And Mr. Pell, how do you feel about that? Well, um, I'm in favor of the Second Amendment and the, the right to bear arms. And yes, I would also like to, to not extend that into weapons <coughs> of mass destruction, biological weapons, uh, uh, that I would like to regulate that Put, place some limit on that. But I'd like to come back to this, the, the public schools and the, 
the libertarians have this notion of a dominant protective association that, that becomes the largest and predominant one. And Robert Nozick, your, your philosopher, says that it has an obligation to apply its court system to even people who are not members. It, likewise, it, so public education is a lot like that. Mm -hmm. It's some obligation to non-members. I don't know this fellow Nozick. I'm afraid I uh, am not a, uh, a deep reader of libertarian theory, and as a matter of fact, I never even heard his name until you brought him up just now. It's a Harvard but, philosophy professor. Oh, cool. But, it's uh, on your side. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, now, uh, to, to get back, though, to the Second Amendment, um, Eric, that is uh, something that anti-gun people often confront libertarians about. Do you have the right to own uh, weapons that they consider particularly nasty, such as assault rifles, submachine guns, nuclear devices, and so forth? I have the right to own them. I don't have the right to use them uh, irresponsibly or in uh, anything less than a, a self-defensive manner. Uh, you know, obviously, when you choose to pull the trigger, uh, it doesn't matter uh, if it's a pistol or a semi-automatic weapon in terms of your intent, which is usually what the law is based on: is your intent, and and that intent is what we we prosecute people on and send them to jail for, which I am in favor of if that intent is in fact considered by the court of law to be wrong. Okay, and um, another point on which uh, libertarians tend to differ from uh, other parties is the um, issue of drug laws. We generally favor the uh, decriminalization of just about all drugs, probably all drugs period, on the grounds that you have the right to uh, medicate yourself as you wish. Um, can you tell me a little about the uh, reasoning behind that? Sure. I've read Robert Nozick, and I'm familiar with Robert Nozick, and again, that comes back to self-regarding behavior. Uh, and in terms of, of drugs, um, you know, if you choose to use the drugs, it, it, it certainly should be your choice as long as it doesn't uh, affect and harm others. Um, you know, and that would be my approach to that. I think it's the, the drug war <laughs> itself has been a, a complete failure and perhaps recouching the term as uh, prohibition might uh, really bring that home more a little bit more so, especially if we uh, have, have citizens who recall the uh, alcohol prohibition that occurred. Okay. Mr. Guller, do you favor the uh, prohibition of certain drugs, or would you fight to have every drug decriminalized? I had a very good friend who had a, a younger brother who chose to self-medicate himself, and one day drove his car up on the side, sidewalk and almost killed four people. You can't self-medicate because you're not a doctor, and neither is... Okay, so the problem then was that uh, the drug that he used to medicate himself was a legal drug at that no, time. it was illegal. Okay, what so I'm making saying. it illegal didn't really save anybody's life, did it? Well, no, it didn't save anybody's life, but it, <clears throat> it did put him away for quite a long time, so he wasn't able to do it again. Okay. Uh, don't you think, though, that even if he had done this under the influence of a legal drug, such as alcohol, the same result would have happened? He would have still been prosecuted for manslaughter and gone to prison. Yes. Uh, so, Mr. Pell, how do you feel about the prohibition of drugs? Well, I don't believe in victimless crimes, so I believe people should be free to do as they wish as long as they're not hurting others and they're doing it on their own private property, and that's, that's fine. Okay, well, we seem to have found at least one fundamental <laughs> difference between the, uh, the two Democrat candidates Well, here. that's because I'm the oldest one. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and uh, now another point that I'd like to bring up is that... Um, one issue on which libertarians often differ is that of abortion. Some of us are pro-life, some of us are pro-choice, but we always debate it on libertarian principles. Uh, Mr. Pell, where do you stand on the issue of abortion? Are you pro-life, pro-choice, and why? Hmm. Uh, I'm pro-life. Um, I do view the fetus as, as a life, and that ending the fetus is killing a human life. On the other hand, I do view a life lived unwanted by you know, your society, your parents, as, as, as a horrible situation and view abortion as a mercy killing that should be left up, that decision left up to the parents. Um, so. Okay, and uh, Mr. Guller, how do you feel about it? Well, I don't think any person in America is pro-abortion. And I don't think that's a really a relevant term that, that should be bandied about. In fact, I favor retroactive abortion, sir. <coughs> well, one, one second. I don't favor abortion based on my religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. I do believe life begins at conception. However, um, a woman's right is also important, is, 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 is paramount important, and I'm not going to tell a woman that she doesn't have the complete, total right over her body because a man does. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, if a woman chooses to have an abortion, that's her choice. Okay. Mr. Sunwall, what's your position? Well, I think I have to say that I am pro-life to the extent that I, I don't think I would make that choice myself, but I'm pro-choice to the extent where I think that government shouldn't necessarily be the one who regulates that decision. Uh, and, and, and you're right, it, it is one of those issues that can be split in conceivably any party at this point. And, um, you know, my question to Mr. Guller in the sense of the woman having the right to own their body would be, suppose I as a, a father uh, decided that I, I would like to keep the child and, and if there were the, the technological possibility of, a, of a, a, say, a, a, an external womb or a transplant, what right would that then ha what right, where would we take that right would be my question and um, you know obviously neither one of my opponents here are advocating the overturn of Roe v. Wade you know that's probably too political or too hot of a political subject you know okay um, how would you feel about uh, I suppose the somewhat related issue of, uh, of assisted suicide or um, well, euthanasia yeah, a moment. Uh, euthanasia yeah uh, I think when you're at that stage you have a, a, an, a, a, an adult who presumably is, is able to make a competent choice in that regard. Uh, and obviously our valuing of life would be how we live that life. Uh, and, and so I would be in favor of um, if, if, if family and doctors and counselors were all um, pretty much on board with the ending of a particular life due to suffering of some sort. Okay. Uh, you know, then. Mr. Guller, you wanted to get a word in? Well, what he said about abortion, just, just know this, that if men carried the offspring, abortion would have been legalized in this country 200 years ago, okay? And if a woman chooses to have an abortion or do anything with her body, there's not a group of men or a room full of men or any, any uh, written document that should be allowed to tell her what to do. Okay. So while I don't personally endorse abortion and I would ask every woman not to have one if they were going to, a woman has a right to her body. Okay, we've got to wind down. Mr. Pell, I'll give you a quick word. Would you like to say anything on the issue of assisted suicide, euthanasia, um, <laughs> voluntary end of life, and so forth? Uh, people should own their own lives exclusively without any uh, other parties being involved. I wouldn't even say family or doctors. I'd say it's up to the person involved, and even if the family and doctors say, no way, forget it, it's still the person's decision. Good libertarian view, Mr. Pell, and thank you all. Uh, we've got to wind it up at this point. But uh, thank you, Ed Pell, Democrat from the 20th District, Eric Sunwall, Libertarian, Morris Guller, also a Democrat. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. I'm Joseph Dobrian. Good night from Hardfire.